Um, I'm reading I Know Why the Cage Bird Thing, uh, part of it. And um, I Know Why the Cage Bird Thing is the reason why I like to read. I had to read it um, in high school when I was going to get a C in uh, English and I couldn't get a C in English. So I read this book to do a book report. And then um, it became the reason why I love to read. And I didn't love to read before that. I thought just reading or watching movies was OK. Um, but then I carried that passion for reading into college and took a class on African American women narratives and that's my favorite. And so this is the reason why I love to read is the passage that I'm gonna sing or uh, sing. Read right now. Um I would sing it if I could. Uh, and then I just printed out the reason why I was banned. Um, I know why the Cage Bird Things has had thirty nine public challenges or banned since nineteen eighty three. The majority of complaints were from parents who objected to the book's depiction of sexually explicit scenes, including the rape and molestation suffered by the author as an eight-year-old. But it also has been challenged for being anti-white and encouraging homosexuality. So I know why the cage word sings. What you looking? The minister's wife leaned toward her, her long yellow face full of sorrow. She whispered, I just come to tell you, it's Easter day. I repeated, jamming the words together, I just come to tell you it's Easter day, as low as possible. The giggles hung in the air like smoking clouds that were waiting to rain on me. I held up two fingers close to my chest, which meant that I had to go to the toilet and tiptoed toward the rear of the church, dimly somewhere over my head. I heard Lady say, Lord bless the child, and praise God. My head was up and my eyes were open, but I couldn't see anything. Halfway down the aisle, the church exploded with, with, were you there when they crucified my Lord? And I tipped over a foot, stuck out from the children's pew. I stumbled and started to say something, or maybe to scream. But a green persimmon, or it could have been a lemon, caught me between the legs and squeezed. I tasted the sour on my tongue and felt it in the back of my mouth. Then, before I reached the door, the sting was burning down my leg and into my Sunday socks. I tried to hold, to squeeze it back, to keep her from speeding. But it, when, it reached, when I reached the church porch, I knew I'd have to let it go. Or it would probably run right back up to my head, and my poor head would explode and burst like a dropped watermelon, and all the brains and spit and tongue and eyes would roll all over the place. So I ran down into the yard and let it go. I ran, peeing and crying, not toward the toilet out back, but to our house. I get a whipping for sure. And the nasty children would have something to tease me about. I laughed anyway, partially for the sweet release. Still, the greater joy came not only from being liberated from that silly church, but from the knowledge that I would die from a busted head. If growing up is painful for the southern black girl, being aware of her displacement is a rust on the razor that threatens the throat. It is an unnecessary insult.